Okay, so today I'm gonna to be working on my air compressor. You can see here, this is a seven and a half horsepower Ingersoll Rand air compressor. It is used, it's about 20 years old, and I actually bought it off of the post office. They were getting rid of it because they said they wanted a larger one. And it's been fairly well maintained. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a good starter project uh, for me in terms of screw type air compressors. There are kind of two challenges with using this in my shop. Uh, the first is that it is wired up for three phase. Um, so the motor is actually a three phase motor. This is, um, I think possibly the original motor uh, that came on it. But since I don't have three phase power here in the shop, I'm gonna be replacing this with a seven and a half horse single phase uh, ball door motor that I, that I bought. And so this will be, uh, should be a direct replacement for it. The other thing uh, that I need to do in order to use this in my shop is get a 50 amp outlet. So since this is a seven and a half horse air compressor, uh, it does require uh, a lot of current, especially uh, when that motor first starts up. And uh, so the, the outlets that I have in here currently, like that one you see back there on the wall, are 30 amp outlets, uh, and they're meant for, for welders or pressure washers, um, but this will require a 50 amp outlet. So uh, I'm having a local electrician come and help me uh, install that tomorrow. And uh, so in preparation of that, I want to get the motor replaced. So that's the task for today. So let's get started. So the, the first thing to do is obviously to remove the old motor. And it's as simple as unbolting it from this base plate. Um, this base plate is a hinged plate. So it swings uh, about this pivot pin and uh, it is driving a belt. So this motor is driving a belt that then spins uh, this air end, which has the screws in it. So to remove the motor, um, all I have to do is swing this plate up and I can get the belt off the other side. Once I get the belt off, I can then unbolt the motor and simply pull it, uh, pull it out through the front of the air compressor. So you can see there is the, the motor pulley or sheave uh, with two belts on it and it is going to the air end pulley or sheath. Um, and so those belts, uh, I'll probably re be replacing those later, but for now they, they're fine. Uh, we've actually tested this on a three phase connection. Burn like a kid. And uh, everything seemed to work fine once we got it wired up properly. So I'm going to now remove those belts and then unbolt the motor and swing it out. Okay, so the first step to getting the old motor off is getting the old belts off. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna try to take the tension off by lifting up on this swing plate and then trying to essentially pin it up with this old screwdriver turned uh, shiv um, that I have here. So I can lift it up. It's not Okay, so I'm going to try uh, removing the belts, I think maybe the way they intended uh, during like regular maintenance, which is to use this bolt right here. So this, this bolt is doing nothing, it's just threaded into this plate right now. Um, but whenever you transport this, you're supposed to lock the motor up so that there's no weight on belts. And to do that, you, you lift up on it and you thread this bolt in right here might be hard to see if there's a slot and a threaded hole and it essentially will clamp the plate in place suspended up in the air. So I'm going to try to do that now so that I can lock it up in the air and take the belt off. So this bolt should come right out. Yep, came right out. That's just a holder for it and then I'll put it in here but I don't want to tighten it up yet. I want to lift up on the plate and then tighten it up. Okay, that seems to have worked. So I'm just gonna pull the belts off now. Pretty, uh, pretty small belts. Between every, every tooth, there's a crack. So uh, I will plan on ordering new ones. Um, it looks like they're welt nuts. So that's great. So I should be able to just loosen the motor by um, 
wrenching on the nuts on top of the plate. So I should not need access to ones on the bottom. So I'm going to let them. Okay. And the plate looks no worse for wear. Sixteen millimeter. One thing that I have not mentioned, of course, is that we uh, I do need to disconnect the electrical from the motor. So this is not plugged into the wall. There's no power to this at all. Um, so there's no hazard from any of this um, wiring. So I'm going to try to disconnect it from the motor itself here, uh, not from the contactor in the cabinet. I figure there's a chance I could reuse the wiring for the new motor. I'll take this one step at a time. So this should be loose now. Yep, it is loose. So um, I'm going to try to just slide the, the pulley, slide the, the sheave uh, through the hole in this back wall uh, just to make sure that you know, I can get the motor out that way without having to take the sheet off and then I'll disconnect the electrical. Well, I am starting to think that the hole is not quite big enough uh, to get the sheet through. Um, it looks like it's just oversized just so that the motor can pivot on this plate for the belt tensioner, but uh, <laughs> It's not quite large enough to actually fit the, the sheath through. So that means I'm gonna to have to take it off on the other side. Okay, so we're on the back now. This is a two-part uh, sheave. This is, this is the sheave, and then this is the bushing. So the bushing is what has uh, the, the bolts in it right now with lock washers. And uh, I have to separate the two and then get them, get them both off. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Not, not too bad. Things are going my way. Get the bolt out by spinning it there. So these, what these bolts do is that you, you put the, the bushing on the shaft, so the bushing fits snugly on the shaft, and it's got a taper uh, on the out, outer diameter, and this sheave has a taper on the inner diameter, and then you pull them together with these bolts and it both locks the bushing on the shaft by shrinking it slightly and locks the sheave on the bushing uh, just by wedging it. So, so now there's nothing holding the two together except the wedge action uh, between the ID of the sheave and the OD of the bushing. So now what they say is, they say to put a little oil on these screws and put them back in the, the threaded holes on the bushing. So I'm gonna get a little bit of lubricant. If any of them don't wanna go in the holes, I can always run a tap in the holes to clean up any surface corrosion. Try to tighten them all up, or snug them all up evenly. Okay, so now they all they all hit something. I'm assuming is is the sheave. So I'm gonna try just turning them. It shouldn't take a whole lot. Still tight. No movement yet. Got one of these uh, rubber rubber band like filter wrenches or band wrenches. See if I can use this to hold the sheave. Hmm. It feels promising.
So you can see, see this is the this this is the sheave. It looks like a looks like a pulley. And so now the only thing holding the bushing on is friction uh, between it and the shaft and this set screw. So it's hard to see, but there's a set screw in there. With the Allen key in there, I'm gonna tap on it a little bit. Tap on the Allen key. With the lead hammer. It's pretty, pretty stiff and what makes me nervous is that eight to, an eighth inch Allen key is not a very big Allen key. It feels very possible to strip it out. I'll be right back. My dad had a, uh, a socket for an eighth inch Allen wrench, and so we cut off an eighth inch Allen wrench and put it in the socket. So I'm gonna try that in a minute. First, I'm going to try just giving it a little tap, this pin punch, I'll just sit down at the bottom, give it a little tap. And I'm putting it on my low power impact gun. I don't, I don't need to shake the world here. Okay, I can feel it seated, so we'll give this a try. Well, the good news is, is I have not stripped it. Bad news is, is that it is not moving. I'm gonna see if there's any chance I can just get that bushing off by spreading it apart with a little wedge. Get a little bit of pry bar action on it. Okay, so you just missed it, but I just got the set screw out. It actually loosened up um, once I drove this chisel into the split collar. So as you can see, that bushing has, has a split in it. And uh, I drove this in to see if I could just slide it off uh, with the set screw in place. And I could not slide it off with the set screw in place. Um, but then I thought, well, maybe driving this in uh, spread the collar apart just enough to loosen the load on the set screw and that indeed uh, was the case. I was able to even get it uh, start backing off the set screw just with the hand allen. The set screw really looks like it's in very good shape. Uh, I might replace it if I notice any damage but for now it looks good. So then the bushing here is uh, is wiggling so that's, that's a good sign. Um, so let's just see if we can get it to slide off. Oh, I think that, I think that's the correct strategy. Hey, hey. Oh, okay. Got it to the end. There we go. Okay. And just that easy. The bushing and the sheave. A tale as old as time. Okay. So now there's nothing holding that motor in there. Uh, or I should say nothing preventing me from pulling that, sh you know, the shaft and back through that panel and so that is what we're going to do next is pull it back out through the front so make sure it slides through the, the wall and it does that is great and now we need to disconnect the electrical so we're we're back at the motor here uh, i took the cover off the metal cover that was just covering the electrical connections and that just reveals uh, three big wire nuts essentially. Um, so these are connected to the, the three hots uh, that are coming in for the three phase because remember this is a three phase motor. So the three black wires are going to these wire nuts and then the green wire that's coming in 
is uh, just connected to the casing of the motor as a ground. So um, these uh, three big wire nuts, I'm probably not gonna get them back through this hole, um, or it's, uh, I guess I might if I take that nut off, but I'm just gonna go ahead and cut uh, the black, the three black wires and the green wire and pull these through. And then the green wire, um, I might actually be able to get that with a socket. Let's see if I have the right socket by chance. Hey, look at that. There we go. So those are out. And so now I should be able to set the motor on the ground. Look at that, it's free. Clean up this platform a little bit for the new motor. Get all the belt shavings off. And I'll clean up the back wall here a little bit too. But I think that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, next step is get the new motor mounted and wired up. And then there's a contactor uh, on the other side of this wall that also needs upgraded. So I've got a I have a new contactor. Um, to handle that 50 amp load as opposed to uh, on the three phase motor it was only it was about half that The old motor starter had a quality Allen Bradley contactor, which was rated for 32 amps. Now 32 amps sounds like a lot until you realize that that only translates to three horsepower on 230 volt single phase. And that just wasn't nearly enough to run the seven and a half horsepower motor that I was installing. In contrast, the new motor starter is oversized. Its contactor is rated for 50 amps which translates to 10 horsepower on single phase at 240 volts. So I like having that oversized, but I properly sized the thermal overload relay for my motor. It is set for about 34 amps right now, and that is a proper overload setting for my motor, which has a full load amps of around 30 at my current voltage.